Okay guys, before we jump into the video, I do want to do a quick plug for some merch. This isn't for profit, but if you like the channel logo and you want an awesome high quality vinyl sticker that you can throw on a truck, gun safe, water bottle, whatever you want, make sure to go down to the video description, find my Instagram, go over there, send me a direct message, and you can find out how to get hooked up with one of these awesome stickers. They're very durable. They look great. I personally really like the channel logo. If you like the channel logo too, make sure to send me a message on Instagram and we can get you hooked. Hey guys, it feels like it's been forever since I've actually done an EDC True to Life EDC update. So today in this video, we are going to be doing just that. We're going to be taking a look at my EDC and how it's changed. And honestly, I do think quite a bit has changed since the last EDC update that I did. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so we're gonna start. We're gonna start with the tech here because the tech is probably the most changed thing, and there's quite a bit to explain to it. So to go over all of the basics for the watch, I'm running an Apple Watch Series Five. I'm running a or for the phone. I'm running an Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I'm running for headphones the Aftershocks Air, and I'll start off with the Airs. So the primary reason I'm running these is because most smartphones nowadays don't have a hard wire for wired in headphones, which is kind of okay for me because I don't really use them much, especially due to the way that my ears are. They really don't work well when I have any type of headphone that is inside my ear. So that's where these uh, Aftershocks airs come into play. They're not the best and they don't have the greatest sound quality, but they do have a really good battery life. They last me usually several days on one charge. They're really easy and stupid simple to set up and pair with your phone and your watch, and they just work really well for me. And being that these are bone conduction, uh, for me, they work better than traditional headphones because they bypass your ears completely. And if you want to know more about bone conduction, you can look that up on your own because that is a lengthy subject. But anyways, these are bone conduction headphones and they work really well for me. And yeah, so that is the headphones. Going over to the Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is a mouthful. It is in a Defender case and this one just so happens to be real tree. I think it's Edge. And uh, some people might be asking or thinking, I got the Realtree uh, Defender look because I am a big, um, you know, outdoorsman and woodsman. And that's not completely inaccurate, but it's actually just the cheapest Defender that I could find that wasn't in a feminine color. So that's why I went with this uh, color and I got this, one, this case used, though you could barely tell it looks very new. So... Anyways, that is the phone setup, and once again, this is, an, this is an Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max, and the reason why I went with the Pro Max, or the 11 Pro Max, especially when some people might be saying, didn't the 12 Pro Max just come out with the battery life on the 11 Pro Max as opposed to the 12 Pro Max, certainly the 12 does have better sensors, better a better chipset in it and you know some clear advantages but one of the biggest disadvantages was Apple decided to slim down the battery of the 12 Pro Max quite considerably in comparison to the 11 Pro Max and I actually like that this uh, phone has a 3800 milliamp hour battery and that does actually mean a lot to me being a woodsman being that I spend a lot of time away from power and away from you know <laughs> chargers and such stuff I do carry battery banks sometimes but I like to, I like to have a phone that will run all day and I mean all day like 24 hours so then lastly is the Apple watch the Apple Watch Series 5, and this one isn't too special. Um, there's not too much to say about it. I got a Series 5 because they're, they're cheaper than the Series 6, and they have basically every advantage, minus the blood oxygen uh, monitor. So aside from that, it is wearing a OtterBox Exo Edge uh, case, which I'm honestly not the biggest fan of this color. The website kind of deceived me. I thought this was going to be a darker blue, but this is the color of the case, so it's a little bit lighter blue than I was wanting, but it works pretty well, and it's a pretty sturdy, pretty thick, and heavy-duty uh, bump case, 
Apple Watches. So yeah, it works pretty well for that. And then I just have a knockoff sport loop on here. And I have a knockoff sport loop because these sport loops are the knockoff sport loops are way cheaper than the real Apple ones and they get the job done just fine. Okay, so this is probably where things have changed the least. And while it may seem like we just spent a whole bunch of time talking about technology, this is going to go fairly quickly because a lot of this has already been covered and a lot of this hasn't really changed because I haven't really needed it to and honestly I really love this gear so the first off thing to get so the first thing to get out of the way is the truck keys have an auto start and of course my truck key for my Toyota Tundra so that's that then of course I have the amazing Chris Reeve knives Sabenza and of course this is a large Sabenza 21 with the Tanto tip I absolutely love this knife yes I've been EDCing it for the past basically most of this year I just really love it and even my when I had my previous Sabenza I EDC the hell out of these knives because they carry really well and they honestly look great I love looking at this thing and yeah it's just one of those knives it's very hard for me to put down though I am thinking of switching back to the Benchmade Skirmish uh, I might do that but I don't know this this is a pretty beautiful Sabenza and uh, yeah I really don't know what more to say about it, but it is an awesome knife, and uh, if you don't like or know Sabenzas, then you don't. If you get it, you get it, basically. But this is a canvas inlaid Sabenza, and of course it is an S35VN, and once again it has a beautiful Tanto tip to it. So that is the primary EDC blade. Next to that is the Trayvax Summit Wallet. This is a wallet I've had for ages, but it just works really well, very small, and yeah, there's not much more to say about that. Then I have the Meritac Embassy Pen, and once again, similar to the Trayvax, this is something I've had for practically ever, but it works really well as a pen, it gets the job done, and especially in these COVID times, it's kind of actually nice to have your own writing instruments because there's a lot of signing uh, in signing in and out of places and it's nice to have something that I know is clean and something that is that I'm carrying I know who's touched it and like I said I know how clean it is so kind of handy in that way so going to the next part of course the all-important Zippo now more than ever that it's winter it's nice to have something for survival uh, to start fires if I need to so I have the Zippo, and I think from my last video to this video, I think I've made this uh, Ranger Band a little bit wider. Uh, in my previous version of this Ranger Band, was pretty slim, and while it worked okay, I found it really hard to properly line it up with the edge of where the top of the case and the bottom of the case on the Zippo align, so I just went with a larger piece of rubber band, or Ranger Band, sorry, and that way it's just easier to cover the whole case I know that there's going to be no gap so it's just a simple Zippo with a Ranger band uh, to help keep the lighter fluid in it for a longer period of time it doesn't make the Zippo waterproof but it does help uh, with retention of the lighter fluid okay so last thing that you guys have probably seen a million times and something that I actually didn't switch out this summer and now that we're back into winter definitely keeping around is the Phoenix UC 35 flashlight Pretty basic, pretty simple, not too much to say here. It's a good flashlight, has 1000 lumen output, and uh, it gets the job done. So last change to the EDC uh, kind of in tool set is the Charge Plus in G10. Now, I know some of you guys mentioned this when I in a video that I did talking about modifying Leatherman multi-tools to make them better, and so that piqued my interest into this G10 version and uh, Sportsman's has the all blacked out version of this. Of course, Bass Pro has the orange version and REI has the red G10 version, but I like this all blacked out version and overall I think it looks pretty cool and it looks pretty awesome in its all black configuration with black G10. Really can't complain about it, it's a pretty awesome tool and of course this does replace the normal Charge Plus that I was carrying previously. So this isn't a huge update to the tool because I was already carrying a Charge Plus. This is just a little bit better in my opinion and for my circumstances for my EDC of course G10 doesn't make sense for everyone. So that is the multi-tool. So last 
but not least, is something that's not really new to the scene, not really new to the EDC, I should say, but it's something that I haven't carried in a while, and that is the Glock 19. Now, some of you may ask, and I did make quite a few videos earlier this year talking about why I like my 1911, and why I was EDCing the 1911 as opposed to something like the G19, or my CZP 10C, and the primary reason I've switched back is just due to the social kind of tensions and issues going on in America right now. Now, luckily, Alaska has been pretty buffered from this, and we really haven't experienced the same level of rioting or anything like that. However, just as a precaution, you know, you don't want to be caught unprepared. I've switched back to a double stack nine mil as opposed to a single stack, just for the sheer capacity. It's not that I necessarily like the uh, G19 over my 1911. It's just that this has 15 rounds as opposed to like 10. And I like the confidence that this has a little bit more when I, I like the confidence this gives me a little bit more with the extra added mag capacity. So that's why I swapped over or swapped back to my G19. And this is in a Nate squared tactical uh, crossbreed holster, of course, Kydex for this and leather uh, for the rest of the holster. So that is the holster that's being carried in. And of course I have, um, this is Critical Duty, which is a plus P 135 grain nine mil round. And of course it's 15 plus one. So that is what I'm carrying for the firearm. And once again, the reason why I'm doing that is just due to the fact that, you know, whatever may happen, I like to have a few more rounds nowadays just in case anything kicks off or just in case I need that extra mag capacity. So that is what I'm carrying for the firearm. So lastly, you've probably seen it plenty enough over here in the corner of the video. This is the belt that I'm usually using for EDC, and I'm not going to pull it fully into frame because it is pretty big, but this is the Hanks Belt's Old World Harness, and it's a pretty thick leather belt. The primary reason I'm using that as my EDC belt is because it's easy to swap from a bushcrafting loadout or a survival loadout to an EDC loadout with this belt. It's a little bit thicker and a little bit more heavy duty, so it allows me to support my everyday carry stuff as well as um, bushcrafting or survival equipment. So I'm carrying this primarily just because it's easier to swap between different loadouts. Last but not least is EDC pants, and I really haven't talked about this in a while, but I certainly have a few options to choose from, but what I've honestly been choosing most of the time is Fjell Raven Vita Pro pants. Once again, I really like all the options of these different pockets. They allow me to carry the different equipment that I want to carry without much issue. I will occasionally swap back between 511 Strike Pants or Carhartt. Uh, cargo work pants, but I really do like these Vita Pros by Fjell Raven. They're very comfortable, very flexible, and for EDC or outdoor use, they work really well. And once again, similar to the belt, I primarily EDC these pants because they allow me to easily swap between bushcrafting and everyday carry loadouts. And especially in the past few months, where I've been working hard to make a lot of videos, I've been having to swap between EDC and bushcrafting and survival so frequently that it's nice to have some things that are interchangeable between the several practices or several different things that I do. So that is why I'm wearing the Fjell Raven Vita Pros. So that is my basic EDC. I know it's been a pretty long video, but hopefully you guys have stuck through it. Hopefully you enjoyed that look. I know I don't do these EDC update videos very much, and I really only do them when things change, or a significant amount of things change. And I feel like definitely quite a bit has changed since the last time I did an EDC update video. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at some of this stuff. And as always, God bless, and I'm out.